they get that way. Like the meat. Yes, they do. See, with the alpaca shearing that you saw me do the other day, sir, we take the blanket, the good stuff off first. With the sheep, we take the junk stuff off first. The belly, being what they lay on, is always down in the bedding. And then we clean up around their back end where they get some urine and manure build up. Bellies out. Here inside the back crotch. See, that's my anxiety. Is, you see, not knowing where the nipples are, I guess if you do a few hundred, you don't know that. Cut them out. <laughs> How big of a problem is that? If, if you take them off, yeah. So, I mean, if you're not breeding her, it's not a problem at all. They'll bleed, but it's not a problem at all. If you're ever thinking of breeding her or, you know, anybody else's animals, when you take them off, she's absolutely worthless. Right. Because okay. she cannot nurse her babies if you take her nipples off because they don't grow back. Yeah. When I started, I don't know if you were there and heard my little story at Chippewa. When I started here and there was an old timer that was helping instruct me, one of the guys that put on a seminar that I learned at, and he said, for the first thousand sheep you shear, that I need to take my checkbook with me. And I said, sir, I'm hoping to have people pay me, why do I need to take my checkbook? He said, because if you take off a used teeth, or you nick a ram's teeth, or his testicles, you need to buy that animal from the producer because it's worthless to them at that point. You ruin their value for production. Now, this was also back in Pennsylvania, and in the uh, late 70s, so production sheep is a lot bigger there than raw and ornament sheep. You know, when I when I moved to New Hampshire from Pennsylvania and found out there wasn't any farm in the state that had more than 500 head, I didn't know where the heck I was ever going to make a living shearing that. The biggest thing with shearing is knowing the anatomy. Yes, I see that. I preached that. My buddy John was helping me earlier today. We were shearing alpacas. And I said, anatomy, anatomy, and anatomy. See, right here, this is the only one. This is the blow that's completely blind. I have no idea where these blades are. I do. But you cannot see it at all. I come right up her throat, up the side of her throat, so I can open this neck and cast up. That's the most challenging right there, it's moving up the head for you. Well, yeah, I guess so. With, with the baby doll south down, with some of the breeds, when you're shearing, and they have wool coverage like this over their eyes, over their ears, for me, this is where I got to take a little more time. And the alpacas, a lot of alpacas have a lot of wool coverage over their eyes and ears. But I have help with me on those. You know, my buddy John is helping me hold their head. So, he's holding on to the ears. I can see where they are. But these guys... I got to work around them. When 
I have a lot of wool on the sheep, and invariably every year I end up running into a couple that haven't been shorn in a couple years. Some of those, the weight of the wool will pull the skin right away from the body. And I'm much more likely to nick and cut them then. Because sheep are a lot looser hided animal than what the alpacas are. Hey, look at that. Let there be light. <laughs> yeah, I had a light bulb moment there. <laughs> See, this, this lower leg wool, just like what you saw us do with the alpacas on Saturday, this is sort of worthless for the fiber because it's so short and matted and dirty. Now we lay them down, do what we call the long blows. So are you resting the heel of the trimmer on the animal and going along? No. When I'm shearing these, I'm imagining I have a small pencil underneath, rolling underneath them. I have just the point of the cutter on the animal's body. And I'm going along pushing them. And not hard. I, I mean, I'm doing it two fingers. The machine is doing the work. Yeah, I mean, it's not on auto drive, you know, like your lawnmower, you can, you know, self-propelled. But it slides through. It goes back to the mountain. But if you, if you hold these flat, she's not a flat animal. She's got curves, you know. So you're, you're leaving, leaving wool on. You're leaving wool on. So this is, I mean, ideally you're wanting the girl to keep here because they're getting hot. And that's completely legitimate. For most everybody else, you know, it's harvest. It's wool harvest. This is where you get to sell your wool, do something with it to make money on it. Jordan, what do you think of that? Pretty cool. Started to trim feet for you too while I have her, but they are in very good shape and don't need anything. The, the concrete just does an excellent job for them, I think. She got a little bit of flare on one side here, but I can trim her. I can trim her up just a little bit around her 